And we're gonna start by just taking a moment. Hi, Roberta. We're gonna take a moment to just slide down. So you can either have your legs straight, your knees bent, whatever feels best to you. And for today, let's start by bringing our hands to rest on our belly button. So both hands resting straight on the abdomen. And for this first few moments that you're lying down in this shape, I'd like you to just observe and notice what happens as you breathe in and as you breathe out, really starting to give a bit more attention to the hands, a bit more attention to the abdomen and watching the rise and the fall of the abdomen. Good morning, Julie. And over the next three to four breath cycles, see if you can breathe into the hands, into the front of the body, as well as breathe into the low back, into the back of the body. And then notice that as you continue to breathe into the hands and the front of the body, the back of the body breathing into the floor, you might also notice breath going down into the base of the pelvis, into the pelvic floor. And then very gently, you'll bring your hands to your waist like you're taking a stand of something or doing a Superman pose. And then slide your hands up so your thumbs wrap in the back and your fingers wrap around the front of your rib cage. So you're holding yourself in a weird Molly Shannon superstar type of thing. So your hands have slid up to hold the outer rib cage as you're still lying down on the floor. There you go. And then you'll take about three to five slow breaths here, just inhaling, breathing into the ribs, pressing them wide and exhaling, narrowing the ribs in. And you've got another two to four breath cycles, just like that, noticing that you can breathe into the back of the body just as much as you breathe into the front of the body. Breathe into the right side of the rib cage, right hand, as much as you breathe into the left side of the rib cage, left hand. And just observe what this is doing to your mental state, your emotional state at this moment. And then we'll go ahead and bring both hands to rest on the top of the chest, just above the breast or chest or nipples and the hands are just resting there. Wherever the elbows can just simply still settle into the floor and you'll take about three to five breaths here. And again, you'll notice what it feels like to breathe into the collarbones, into the hands, into the armpits. And you'll notice what it feels like to just let the breath escape and soften from this part of the body. And then notice what it feels like to breathe into the back of the body just as much as you breathe into the front of the body. And as you take these last two breath cycles, really fill the upper part of the lobes of the lungs, the upper rib cage. In the Krishnamacharya, Desikachar lineage, you want to spend a lot of time breathing into this part first when you inhale because it allows you to create a little bit of extension and elongation through the vertebra of the spine. And so since a few of you mentioned feeling tightness in the upper trapezius and a few of you chronically experience lower back pain, if you can breathe up into this part at the beginning of every inhalation, it'll create the space for the vertebra to just stack a little bit more easily on top of each other. So now bring one hand to the heart and one hand to the abdomen and you'll just take three breath cycles of your own. And you might notice that you wanna start by breathing into the collarbones and then into the ribs and then into the belly. Or for you, it might feel better to breathe into the belly and then breathe into the ribs and then breathe into the collarbones. But whichever choice you've made, you're allowing yourself to just connect to what the breath is doing in this moment, to how you're feeling in this moment. I have a few peak poses that I'd like us to work towards today. And I'd like us to be very mindful and attentive to our breath being this long and luxurious as we do so. 
And so to that end, we'll try to get there as gently and as efficiently as possible. So go ahead, if you haven't already, start to bend both of your knees and plant your feet firmly on the floor. Draw your feet about hip distance apart and then draw your right knee into your chest. Interlace your hands at the back of your right thigh. So this will help with knee issues as well. And holding onto the back of the right thigh, you'll just inhale and start to straighten your right leg a little bit, drawing the leg away from you. And then exhale, pulling the thigh into the chest, keeping the knee bent. And you'll just do about four sets of these. So inhaling, maybe straightening the leg, drawing the thigh away from you. And exhaling, pulling the thigh into the chest and bending the knee. And you've got about three more sets of these and I encourage you to just be very small and gentle with this movement. There's a little bit of a nerve flossing exercise and you're just starting to pay attention to how the body is feeling and how the breath is feeling once you've started to add in movement. Awesome sauce. The next time you hug that right knee into the chest, go ahead and pause. Keep your hand at the back of your right thigh and take a big breath in. As you exhale, flex through your left foot and slide your left foot forward and away from your bum and along the floor. Continue to take three to five more breath cycles, just pulling that right thigh into chest, reaching out through the left heel and broadening across the collarbones. Noticing what you notice here, seeing how the body is responding, noticing how the mind is responding. And then very gently, you'll release the right thigh, bring the right foot to the floor, knee stays bent. Drag the left foot in to meet the right foot and just take a moment to let the hands settle to the sides of the body and just pause and notice what's different between the right side and the left side. How do you notice the shoulders making contact with the floor, the hips making contact with the floor? And as you're ready, you'll exhale and draw that left knee into the chest. Interlace your hands at the back of the thigh. And then you'll just take about three to five little pulses, the same as you did on the other side. So you'll inhale, the thigh will come away from you. Maybe you'll straighten the leg up. And exhale, drawing that left thigh into your chest and bending the knee. And again, you're just working to see how long and steady the breath can be. The range of movement will naturally increase as the quality of the breath increases. So all you really have to do is focus on deepening the breath and everything else will follow. We've got about one more set. And then the next time that left knee is bent into the chest, go ahead and pause, draw the thigh closer to your torso, take a big breath in. And exhale, flex through your right foot, slide it forward and down along the floor. And once the right leg gets to the floor, notice that you can roll your inner right thigh to the floor a bit more. Yep. Pull that left thigh a little bit closer to your chest and then just pause and breathe. How does it feel to breathe fully in this shape? Are you now breathing still in the collarbones and in the ribs and in the abdomen? Or is the breath a little bit more segmented? You've got about one more breath cycle here. And then at the end of your next exhalation, you'll gently release the back of the left thigh, release the left foot to the floor, bend the right knee and slide it in to meet its mate. Take a moment to pause and just notice what you notice. How is the breath? How is the body? Awesome sauce. You can go ahead and release your hands alongside your hips if they're on the body. Flex through your right foot, send your right foot down and away from you. Now activate that right leg as best as you can and take a big breath in here. And as you exhale, lift that right thigh up so it is perpendicular to the floor. And then inhale, lower it all the way back down. And you've got about five to 10 of these. And I encourage you to move slower than you think you want to. <clears throat> One, because it builds more strength. Two, it sends neural or it helps fire the brain a little bit better. And three, it helps you deepen your breath. So that's win-win all around. 
So the inhalation draws the foot to the floor, maybe it hovers, and the exhale draws it back up. Uh, some sauce. The next time your right leg is perpendicular to the floor, you'll pause. You might grab behind the back of the right thigh and start to maybe walk your hands up your calf a little bit. Now continue to flex through that right foot, continue to keep the head on the floor and continue to breathe very, very deeply. Some of you will stay right here. Others of you will take a big breath in, flex through your left foot and start to slide your left foot forward and along the floor. And just as we did before, the left inner thigh is rolling to the floor. The outer right hip is drawing away from you and just notice what happened to your breath. How calm, how steady, how even can the breath be? The end of your next exhalation, if that left leg was elongated, gently bend the knee and plant the foot firmly on the floor. Release the back of the right thigh and let the right foot drop next to the left. Lower the arms and just pause and notice what you notice between the right and the left hip, the right and the left shoulder, and the quality and the state of your breath. Take a big breath in here. And then as you exhale, flex through that left foot, send the left foot forward and away from you. Squeeze all the muscles around that left leg. Take a big inhalation here. And then exhale, you'll draw that foot towards your face. And you've got about five of these. And you're just taking these very slowly, inhaling, lowering the foot to the floor, maybe just hovering it a millimeter off the floor. And exhaling, drawing it back up. And we're starting with the knee bent just because it enables more control of the abdominal region and it also keeps it a little bit easier on the low back. And so you've got about two more sets, noticing what's happening on this side versus the other side. And then the next time that left leg is up towards the sky, you'll go ahead and pause. Interlace your hands at the back of the left thigh. Maybe start to walk your hands up the back of the left calf, flex through the left, left foot a lot. If you're good here, stay here. Otherwise, take a big breath in, flex through your right foot. And as you exhale, you'll send that right foot away from you. Continue to roll the inner right thigh to the floor if the right leg is straight. Draw that outer left hip away from the left shoulders and you're still pushing your thigh into your hands as you pull your hands into your thigh. Or your calf if your hands are there. <clears throat> Take one more steady breath here. And then at the end of your next exhalation, if the right leg is straight, gently bend it, plant the foot on the floor, release the left thigh and release the left foot next to the right. Lower both hands alongside your hips and just take a moment to pause and to breathe and to notice what you notice. Awesome sauce. Go ahead and grab one of your blocks and slide that block in between your inner upper thighs. And it can be on the first or the second setting, whatever feels most appropriate for you. And the first thing that you'll do once you've got that block is notice if you need to adjust your feet a little bit so the ankles are directly underneath the knees. And then the heels might need to turn in or turn out a little bit just to, based upon how that feels for your knees. Cool. Now, the first thing that you're gonna do is you're just gonna squeeze that block at about 20 to 30% of your capacity. And then you'll let that go. And you'll do that about three to five more times. So you'll squeeze that block, maybe holding it just for a little bit, noticing the tone of the adductors and then release and let that go. And you'll squeeze and you'll hold and you'll just notice what you notice. And then you'll let that go. And last time you'll squeeze and you'll hold 20% of your capacity. And then you'll release and let that go. Okay, this is going to be asymmetrical. Inhale, push down through your feet, lift your right arm up and over your head, coming into a bridge pose with only one arm high. And then exhale, lower the hips, lower the right arm, look to the left. Yeah, and then we'll do that on the other side. So inhale, left arm lifts, hips lift, head comes to center. And then exhale, lower the left hand, lower the hips, head turns towards the right. 
And you've got about two more sets of those. So inhale, push through the feet, lift the right arm, head comes to center. And then exhale, look to the left, reach out through the right fingers, lower the hips down, noticing if they can land at the same time. All right, left side. Inhale, push through the feet, lift the hips, lift the left arm, head comes to center. And then exhale, look to the right, lower the left arm, lower both hips down. Awesome sauce, last time each set. Inhale, push through the feet, lift the right arm, lift the hips. And then exhale, slowly reach out through the right fingers, look to the left, lower the hips back down. And last set, inhale, push through the feet, lift the hips, lift your left arm, head comes through center. And then exhale, look to the right, lower the left arm down, lower the hips down. Cool, I lied, we'll do one more, but this time we'll both arms, head will stay center. Inhale, push through the feet, lift through the hips, lift through the arms. As you exhale, keep your hips high, but lower your hands back to the floor. Sorry, hands alongside your hips, there we go. Now from here, you'll walk the shoulders underneath you. Maybe you'll interlace the hands, maybe you won't, but you'll continue to hug into that block. Notice now that you can press down into your big toes and that's slightly different than just squeezing into the block. And then notice if you can draw the shoulder blades together so the base of your spine, C7, feels like it floats up and away from the floor as you press into the center of the skull. And you've got about three to five more steady breath cycles here, just observing and noticing what you notice. At the end of your next exhalation, you'll gently unclasp the hands, untuck your shoulders, lower the pelvis back down to the floor and pause. Keep that block for a moment and just settle and breathe. Awesome sauce. All right, go ahead and draw your knees in towards your chest and make about a 90 degree angle with your thighs. Flex through your feet to make a little 90 degree angle with your knees and your shins. And then bring your hands to the base of your head and go ahead and hold your head. Awesome sauce. So we're staying with this whole breath thing. Take a big breath in here. As you exhale, squeeze your block, lift your shoulders up and away from the floor. Inhale here, lower the head back down. And then exhale, squeeze the block, lift the shoulders and look towards your block. And you've got about four more of these. Inhale, slowly lower the head down. Exhale, squeeze the block, draw the abs in, lift the shoulders, lift the head. And inhale, slowly lower down. Exhale, squeeze the block, lift the shoulders, lift the head. And inhale, lower back down. On this last one, we're gonna stay. So you'll exhale, squeeze the block, come up. Now, as you inhale here, see if you can lift just the shoulders up a little bit more. As you exhale here, squeeze the block and curl your tailbone under. Inhale, see if you can lift the shoulder blades a little higher up. Exhale, squeeze the block and lift the tailbone. Last one, inhale, lengthen through the crown of your head. Exhale, squeeze the block, curl your tailbone under. Next inhalation, you'll slowly lower the spine down and then exhale, slowly lower the feet down. Take a moment to pause and just notice how you doing. Awesome sauce. Go ahead and release that block from between your thighs. And this is weird, and I admit that ahead of time, but it should feel interesting, hopefully. Go ahead and flex through just your right foot. Send your right foot down and away from you, keeping the left knee bent. Then bring both hands alongside your hips. Now you'll still keep rolling that inner right thigh to the floor, but you'll inhale and roll or reach your arms up and over your head like you're unrolling your yoga mat. And then you'll exhale, draw the hands back to that starting position. And you've got two more of those. So slow inhalation draws the arms up and overhead. There we go. And slow exhalation draws the hands back down. Now, as you take this third set before we hold, I want you to notice if the hands touch at the same rate when they reach up and overhead, if both hips feel even on the floor, even though one knee is bent. 
Aha. And exhale, come back. And this last time, we'll go ahead and inhale both arms up and overhead, and we're going to stay there. Now, as you exhale, invite your front two hip bones together, your pubic bone to your navel. And then as you inhale, reach out through your fingers and out through that right heel, finding a little bit more space through the upper vertebra. And next exhale, lower the hands alongside the hips. Slowly bend your right knee, release the right foot to the floor and just pause and notice if you notice anything different between the sides. Awesome sauce. Let's go ahead and try the other side. Inhale, flex through the left foot, slide the left foot long and in front of you. As you exhale, hug front two hip bones together, lengthen that tailbone down and pubic bone up. And then inhale, start to float your arms up and over your head. And exhale, draw the hands back alongside your hips. And you've got about three more sets of these and you're just working with your own breath pace. Again, noticing what you notice. Do both hands touch the floor above your head at the same rate? Do both hands touch alongside your hips at the same rate? It's very interesting how this simple asymmetry with the knee bent suddenly makes things seem a little bit more challenging. Awesome sauce. The next time your arms are up and over your head, you'll go ahead and pause there. Flex through that left foot, inner thigh to the floor. Front hip bones draw together, pubic bone draws to navel. And then you inhale, reach out through those fingers, finding more space through the upper vertebra. And exhale, lower your hands alongside your hips. Go ahead and bend the left knee, plant the left foot next to the right foot. Pause. Flex through the right foot, send the right foot forward. Right foot is now forward along the floor. Make sure your left foot is directly underneath your left knee and it's close enough for you for this next little thing. Walk your shoulder blades underneath you just a little bit. And then you'll go ahead and inhale, lift that right leg. So actually let's do it this way. Lift your right leg so it's parallel to your left thigh. So right leg is like on a 45 degree angle. Yay, okay, this is gonna be fun. Take a big breath in. Take a big breath out. As you inhale, push through that left foot, lift your hips up. And exhale, slowly lower down. You've got about five sets of these. And you'll notice that keeping the foot on a 45 degree angle is a lot harder than you would think. We're using physics to help us because then that leg can't just hook into um, the hip socket. And so we're adding a little bit of leverage and torque. And so you're or leverage, not torque, hopefully. And you're gonna slowly come up and down and hello, quivering left butt cheek, most likely. Keep reaching out through that right foot for dear life. And then the next time you have lifted your pelvis up, you're gonna stay there for five steady, deep breaths. Hooray, hooray, hooray. Push down through that left foot. I encourage you to keep your hands just on the floor as they are, but press down into the upper arms, push down into that left foot, push down into the back of your skull and notice if you stopped breathing. Take two more steady breath cycles here, reaching out through the right ball of the foot. Yep, you guys are doing great. And at the end of your next exhalation, you'll slowly lower the pelvis back down to the floor, keeping that right leg straight. <laughs> I know, I know, I know. Then bend the right knee, plant the right foot next to the left. Pause and breathe. Check in with your hips, check in with your shoulders. What do you notice? Awesome sauce. Okay, let's go ahead and try this one more time. So flex through the left foot, send the left foot forward and away from you. And then you'll lift that left leg up so the left thigh is parallel to the right. So a little bit of psoas engagement there. When you're ready, take a big breath in and a big breath out. And on your next inhalation, push through the right foot, lift the hips high, reach out through that left foot. And exhale, slowly lower the pelvis back down. We've got about four more of these. And just observe what's different on the right side versus the left side which leg tends to probably lift you a little bit more actively into 
uh, Setu Banda Sarvangasana bridge pose. Nice job, guys. Last set. And then this one will go ahead and hold. So the next time your pelvis is high, you'll pause. You're pressing down through the right foot, pushing down into the backs of the shoulders, backs of the arms, maybe the palms as well. Reach out through that left foot, keeping the left knee in line with the right. And you're just pausing and you're breathing and you're pausing and you're breathing and you're noticing what you notice. The end of your next exhalation, you'll slowly lower the spine back down. Gently bend the left knee, release the left foot to the floor and pause. Notice the right hip, notice the left hip, notice the shoulders. Has anything shifted? Okay, adding on. Cross your right ankle over the top of your left thigh, actively flex through that right foot a lot. Now bring both hands to the back of your head, holding your head with both of your hands and keep the elbows pretty wide. Awesome socks. Take a big breath in here, actively flexing through that right foot. As you exhale, you'll start to lift your left thigh closer to your face so your left foot can start to reach up towards the sky. Now, some of you will keep your head completely down on the floor right here, and that's awesome, and you can do that. Some of you will want the added challenge of tucking chin to chest, lifting shoulders and elbows and things away from the floor. Awesome sauce. All of you are going to take a big breath in, and all of you are going to take a big breath out. As you inhale, lower that left leg, right leg towards the floor until they hover off the floor. So that whole figure four configuration, straight leg comes down to the floor. And then exhale, resist as you draw the leg back up. So you push all the way back up. Yep. And then inhale, let the leg just float down to the floor. Very easy, very soft. Oh, buddy, man. Exhale, resist and draw it all the way back up. And you've got two to three more sets of these. So the left leg stays straight. And you inhale, lower the left leg, right ankle towards the floor. And exhale, come all the way back up. Hooray. And inhale, come all the way down. And exhale, come all the way back up. And then you'll pause here. You'll take a complete breath cycle. And then we're going to reverse what we just did with the efforting. So you'll inhale, resist. So that right ankle will push all the way down to the floor. Left leg will hover. And then exhale, the leg will just happily float up. And you've got three more sets of these. Inhale, resist, right ankle pushes left thigh to the floor, left thigh pushes up and resists. And exhale, they float straight back up. Two more sets. So we're working on this because a lot of time our low back hurts because our psoas is overly tight, but it's not tight and strong. It's just like tight and short and weak. So we're trying to strengthen it before we lengthen it. The next time your legs come up, you'll pause happily bend that left knee, grab behind the back of your left thigh and take Suki, Ron, Drasana, hooray after all of that. You might open the left thigh slightly to the left, continue to press the right ankle into the top of the left thigh and just pause and breathe. Notice what you notice. And then very gently release the back of the left thigh. Left foot comes to the floor, right foot comes next to it. Pause and just notice what you notice between your right hip and your left hip. Notice what you notice between the right shoulder and the left shoulder. Awesome sauce. All right, let's add on. Cross your left ankle over the top of the right thigh. Yep, actively flex through that left foot. So left toes pull in alignment with left knee. Yep. And then go ahead and interlace your hands at the back of your head. Awesome sauce. Next exhale, draw that right thigh closer to your chest. And then you'll inhale, start to send the right foot up towards the sky. Some of you will keep your head on the floor, happy as a clam here. Some of you will tuck chin to chest with the shoulders and the elbows up and away from the floor. And then just as we did before, you'll inhale, reach that foot forward and to the floor. 
And then you exhale, resist as you draw the leg back up to vertical. So we're working on concentric, eccentric, and isometric actions here. Hooray! And you've got three more sets. So you're just noticing the inhale allows it to float down super easy. The exhale is what pushes. So that left ankle into right thigh, right thigh into left ankle. And it doesn't matter how big the movement is. It just matters that you're going through your full range as possible for you at this moment in time. So it could be smaller than what you're doing. Might be exactly what you're doing. Might be bigger than what you're doing. It's totally okay. Awesome stuff. After you've done about four to five sets and that right leg is back up at the top, you'll pause. You'll take a breath in, see if you can lift those elbows and lift those shoulders. Next exhale, draw the low belly in and then inhale, float your right leg long and down, resisting it as it goes down. And then exhaling, letting it float right back up. And you've got about four more sets. So the inhale, you resist left ankle into right thigh, right thigh into left ankle, let the leg come all the way down. And exhale, it floats right back up. Two more sets. And this isn't easy. So if you're finding it not easy, you're probably doing it right and you're probably not alone. This is one of the best conditioning exercises I've found for really opening up the psoas in a way that's productive for it long-term. Awesome sauce. The next time that right leg is high, go ahead and bend the right knee, grab at the back of the right thigh and take Suki Randras in a figure four. And you might open the right thigh just a little bit to the right as you press the left ankle into the top of the right thigh and continue to flex through the feet. Notice what your breath is doing now. Did it become very short and stagnant or stuttering through that? Or did it stay calm through the whole thing? No worries either way. We're just noticing what we notice. And then at the end of your next exhalation, gently release the back of the right thigh. Right foot comes to the floor. Left foot comes right next to it. Take a moment to pause. How does the right side feel? How does the left side feel? How do the shoulders feel? The hips feel? Awesome sounds. All right. Go ahead and extend your right arm over your head. Roll over onto your right side. And the first thing you'll do is you'll bend your right elbow and hold your head with your hand and see if you can make your body one long straight line. One long straight line. So legs are straight, feet are in line with knees, knees are in line with hips, hips are in line with shoulders. I encourage you to bring your left hand in front of you just for support, but you can totally do this holding on to your top hip. From here, you'll bend your left knee and let your left leg come towards your left elbow, hovering off the floor, pressing the right pinky toe into the floor as you're flexing through that right foot. Then you're just gonna pause and hold here for a moment, saying hello, obliques. Take a moment to pause, take a moment to breathe. On your next exhalation, you'll gently lower the right knee in front of you. So it just comes down to the floor. You can then take your, sorry, your left knee in front of you. You can then take your left hand to grab your right ankle as you bend your right knee. Some of you will extend that right arm out so it goes straight above your head. Some of you will guide it more towards your left knee. But wherever you happen to be, you're going to start to roll more towards your belly, still holding onto your right foot with your left hand. So we're going for a, a variation of cat chasing its tail. And then you inhale, kick your back foot, your right foot into your left hand, and exhale, draw the heel closer to your pelvis. We've got about four of these. We're trying to find a gentle quad stretch on the front of your right thigh as you're maybe rolling your left low belly pretty close to the floor to find that. Awesome sauce. Some of you will stay right there. Some of you will reach your right hand even more to the left side of your space, left knee, and you'll start to roll your chest up towards the sky, still holding on to your right foot. So now you've got a quad stretch and a twist and you're somewhere halfway on your back. Yeah. 
and you're just pausing and you're breathing and you're noticing what you notice. Great, for those of you that have rolled mostly to your back, gently release your right foot. Everyone gently release your right foot and then make your way onto your back, extend your legs long and pause. Just notice what you notice happening in the body. How does the right side of the body feel? How does the left side of the body feel? Cool, we'll go ahead and try that on the other side. So extend your left arm alongside your ear, roll over onto your left side body. Bend the left elbow, hold your head with your left hand. And then extend your legs down so your feet are aligned with your knees, your knees are aligned with your hips, your hips are aligned with your shoulders. Highly encourage the right hand to come in front of you like a happy little kickstand and flex through both of your feet a lot. So you can roll the inner thighs together and back behind you. And then hover your right knee in front of you. So it's like a one-legged Tadasana, right knee coming towards right elbow. Knee can be straight, knee can be bent. It's totally up to you, but you're gonna pause and you're gonna breathe. Pressing the left pinky toe into the floor. And you're pausing and you're breathing and you're pausing and you're breathing. Next exhale, slowly lower the right knee to the floor in front of you. Extend your left arm long, either above your head or slightly in front of your face. And then start to roll more to your belly, more towards the right knee, bend your left knee, grab your left knee with your right hand. Awesome sauce. And then you've just got about four of these little pulses. So you'll inhale, kick your foot into your hand and exhale, draw your heel closer to your pelvis. And you're just noticing where the sensation is. Ideally, we're trying to keep it in the belly of your left thigh. Not too much in the hip, not too much in the knee, just in the belly of the thigh. And the floor in this orientation generally helps with that alignment. We've got one more little pulse with the breath. And then some of you will stay pretty much as you are here. Some of you will reach your left hand towards your right knee and start to roll more towards your back, maybe completely onto your back so that you're in an upper spinal twist while still holding on to your right leg. And if you've gotten all the way onto your back while still keeping the foot on the floor, you might actually grab your right thigh with your left hand. But you'll just pause and you'll breathe. And you'll just notice what you notice happening there. Awesome sauce. If you're in that twisted position, gently release your left foot. And then everyone gently release the left foot and slowly make your way onto your back. And just take a moment to pause and breathe. Notice what you notice on the right side. Notice what you notice on the left side. Awesome sauce. Go ahead and make your way onto your abdomen for crocodile pose for just a moment. And just observe what it feels like to now be on your belly. And then from here, let's go ahead and walk our elbows in so they're pretty much underneath our shoulders. Come to a sort of sphinx-ish position and interlace your hands. Now from here, start to curl your toes under. And then you're just gonna lift your hips high enough to make one line from your hips to your knees to your shoulders. And some of you will stay here in this forearm plank with your knees down. And some of you will lift your legs up and away from the floor. But we're gonna stay here for about 10 to 12 breaths. Lower your pelvis just a little bit for me, Roberta. There we go. And so as you're here, the major impetus is to keep lengthening your tailbone back, keep pressing down into your forearms and lifting up through your inner armpits. And then notice how you can make one long line from your head, through your shoulders, through your hips, through your heels. And then I think that was probably about three breath cycles. So you got about another seven more. And you might've laughed and said, just come my breaths a lot faster than that. And that's okay. Let's see if we can slow it down. 
the slower that the breath goes, you might start to notice a little bit more shaking in the body. And that's okay. See how long and slow the breath can be. Got about three more breath cycles here. Tailbone lengthens back, forearms press down, sternum reaches forward. Nice job. The end of your next exhalation, knees slowly touch the mat, slowly unfurl the pelvis back down to the floor and just pause and breathe. Notice what you notice. Ideally, we tried to get a little bit of sensation of heat in the abdominal region, but that may or may not have happened. It depends on what's being true for you. All right. From your bellies, walk your hands back alongside your lowest ribs. Press yourself up to hands and knees. Keep your feet about hip distance apart. Bring the tops of the feet to the floor and then exhale, tuck chin to chest, press back to that modified child's pose. We're gonna take chakra of a cross in about four times. So you'll inhale, come forward to hands and knees, end of the in-breath, lift the gaze. As you exhale, tuck the toes, lift the hips, downward facing dog. Yep. And then you'll just inhale, come back to hands and knees. And you'll exhale, press back to that modified child's pose. And you've got three more sets of this series. And I encourage you to work with your breath. How long can you make your breath as you travel forward to a little baby cow shape, as you travel back to either down dog or child's pose? You're just working with how long you can make your breath. If we look at low back pain from an Ayurvedic perspective, it's said that there is an imbalance in our vata dosha, vata being the air and the ether elements. And often what creates a disturbance in our air and ether elements is really too much fast and frenetic movement. So the more that we can slow down and really just connect with what's happening moment to moment, it allows that energy to start to dissipate, to start to settle. And then the other thing that Vata appreciates is heat. So that's why we're doing so much core stuff. The other thing Vata appreciates is core stuff because it helps us with elimination. So the next time you find yourself in that downward facing dog shape, you'll go ahead and pause there for three to five steady breaths. And once we get here today, this is gonna sound super weird. I want you to bend just your right knee, just your right knee. Shift your hips a little to the left. Yep. And then notice what happens if you bend the right knee a little bit more and then shift your hips to the right. And you'll go ahead and straighten that right leg, bring the hips back to center. And then you'll bend the left knee and shift the hips to the right. And then shift the hips to the left and come back to center. You can do that a few more times on your own. We're just basically allowing the pelvis to shift one way and noticing that you can allow the knee to either help or intensify that depending upon how you direct the knee. And then once you feel pretty complete with that, go ahead and come to a still neutral downward facing dog and just breathe. Awesome sauce, guys. Lower your knees to the mat and come to tabletop position. Highly encourage you to pad your knees if your knees are sensitive, but you do whatever the heck happens to work for you. Okay, now from hands and knees, make sure your hands are directly underneath your shoulders, spread wide through your hands, and then slide just your left foot back, keep the toes on the floor. Now as weird as this sounds, slide your right foot forward and come to the tips of your fingers like Captain It or Captain It, Cousin It or Cousin Thing from the Adams Family. So you're like literally clawing the mat, your right hand is forward, your left foot is back. Okay. Some of you will stay exactly as you are here. Some of you will lift your left leg up. Some of you will lift your right arm forward. 
and you'll pause and you'll breathe. You keep lengthening your tailbone back, keep reaching out through your fingers. So that same elongation that we did on our back, you're doing here. And we're gonna just hold this for, I don't know, another four to five breath cycles. Keep lifting through your inner left thigh, reaching out through the right fingers while keeping the right arm integrated. Oh, buddy, and shaking's okay. Next exhale, lower just the right hand, coming back to the tips of your fingertips, cousin it, cousin thing. Then lower the left foot down, lower the left knee down. Let's go ahead and switch sides, send the right foot back, tuck the toes under. Keep the whole right palm on the floor if you can, and just walk the left fingers forward so it's a diagonal with the left arm, and then you come to the tips of your fingers there. And you can stay right there, or you can float your right leg up. And then you can float your left arm up, thumb faces up. And we're gonna pause here and breathe here. Keep pressing down into left shin. Keep pressing down into right hand, length and tailbone back and breathe. Yep. Next exhale, lower just the left hand. Then lower the right foot. Walk the right or left hand back, walk the right knee forward. Great, we're gonna do that one more time. So when you're ready, Slide the left foot back, reach the right hand forward, and you might just stay there in that prep position or you might lift the limbs up and away from the floor. And this is just a really good strengthener for our back, our erectors, our lumbar spine, our trapezius. You're just pausing in your breathing. And the wobbles just indicate that we haven't done this type of strengthening in a while, and that's okay. When you're ready, lower the right hand first. Then lower the left toes, then walk the left knee in, walk the right hand back, and then other side. Go ahead and slide that right foot back. Slide the left hand forward. Then you might lift the limbs up and away from the floor one at a time or together, and you'll just pause. Sandy, lower the outer right hip to the floor just a bit more for you. Ah, yep. Reach back through the right foot, everybody, right big toe. And then when you're ready, lower just the left hand, lower the right foot, walk the left hand back, right foot forward, and then make your way back to downward facing dog and just pause and notice what that feels like after all of this. How does your down dog feel now? How do the hips feel now? How do the shoulders feel now? Okay, let's add on. Inhale, send your right foot up and back. And just like you were in that bird dog position, you're reaching out through the right foot, you're pushing down and forward through both hands. And next exhale, step that right foot quietly between your hands, low lunge position, similar to what we did on our back. Lift up through that inner left thigh and reach the foot back, reach the heel back. And on your next exhale, lower your left knee to the floor. Yep, walk both hands up the center of your right thigh. Yep. Push down into your back knee, push down into your front foot, hug those points together. And we're gonna to take about five of these. So you'll inhale, let your pelvis slide forward a millimeter and exhale, you'll slide your pelvis back. And you just got about four more of those. Inhale, coming forward, feeling what's happening on the front of your left quad and exhaling, sliding back. Two more, inhale, coming forward, keeping heart lifted and exhaling, going back. Last one. Awesome sauce, okay. So the next time you're forward, you'll go ahead and pause here. You might just continue to just push down into your left knee, push down into your right foot and stay here. You might wanna reach your left arm up and overhead, and that might be enough of a challenge for you. You might wanna reach your right arm up to meet it. You might stay exactly as you are or grab your left wrist and reach up through the left fingertips as you pull them slightly over to the right. But if you've done that, keep drawing your front ribs in and back. Lightly squeeze your left butt cheek as you allow the pelvis to just find a nice gentle stretch on the lats, on the psoas, on the quad, perhaps on the left side. See if you can take in a deeper breath in the upper ribs and underneath your armpit. Next inhalation, you'll come back up to center. If you took the side bend, release your hands 
and then start to hinge at your hips. Hands might come to the blocks or they might come to the floor. Go ahead and flex through your right foot, drawing the toes back towards your face and just pause here. We're not gonna stay here for more than a minute. Well, more than a few breaths. And you'll just see how that feels to take this counter stretch. And then gently, you'll shift your weight forward, bend the front knee, plant your palms and step back, downward facing dog and pause. How does the right hip feel in comparison to the left? How do the shoulders feel? Notice what you notice. And then we'll go ahead and try that on the other side. So inhale, lift your left leg up and back. Reach out through that inner thigh and then exhale, quietly step that foot between your hands. Find as long of a stance as you can here. So you're reaching back through your right heel and forward through your left knee. And then you'll slowly lower the right knee all the way down to the mat. From here, walk your hands up the center of your left thigh and bring your spine up to vertical. And just like we did on the other side, you've got about five little pulses, inhaling, coming forward a millimeter and exhaling, going back. And we're trying to make sure that our front knee isn't going too far over our front ankle. And then notice if you're holding any tension in your mouth, Holding any tension in your eyes. See if you can soften that and let that go. Yep. Awesome, soft. Next time you come forward, go ahead and pause. You might stay exactly as you are, just pushing down into your right knee, pushing down into your left foot, lengthening tailbone, buttocks flesh down. You might reach your right arm up and over your head and just feel a stretch that's happening on the right side. You might reach up through your left arm as well. Keep pushing down into your left foot. You might grab your right wrist and take a little gentle side bend. So by gentle, I mean, it could be really almost imperceptible. But you're drawing your front ribs in and back. You're breathing as best as you can into your right rib cage, into those intercostal muscles there. Keep lightly squeezing your right glute. We got one more breath cycle here. If you took the side bend, you'll gently come up through vertical. Release your right hand. Bring your hand outside of your hips to the floor or the blocks. And then you'll start to shift your weight back and straighten your front leg. And you'll just pause here for a moment, curling the left toes back towards your face reaching in the heart and sternum forward and noticing what you notice. Awesome sauce. Go ahead and inhale, bend the front knee, shift your weight forward, plant the palms and lift back up to downward facing dog. And then we'll just pause and we'll breathe and we'll notice what we notice. Awesome sauce. Let's add on. Inhale, lift your right leg up and back. As you exhale, quietly step that foot between your hands. Great. From here, we're gonna just allow ourselves to lower that left knee back to the floor. Go ahead and straighten your front leg long. So we're gonna take about four sets of these. So you'll just bend and straighten that front knee before we'll try to hold Ardha Hanumanasana or Hanumanasana. So you'll straighten the front leg and you'll bend the front knee and you'll straighten the front leg and you'll bend the front knee. And you're just moving at your own breath pace, trying to find a little bit slower, longer breath. And you're noticing that with each repetition of this, it gives you a little bit more insight of how the body needs to adjust in order to make this next shape possible. So the next time your right leg is straight and your pelvis is back, we're gonna go ahead and stay there. Highly encourage hands on blocks. You do whatever works for you though. And you'll curl your right toes to your face. Now, depending upon if you're on a wooden floor or on your sticky mat, some of you will be able to slide your front foot forward 
Some of you will need to walk your back knee back. It depends upon what surface you're on. But if you're walking your back knee back, tuck the toes under and walk the back knee back or do as Jenny did and slide your blanket back in order to adjust that. We're gonna see what's happening here in Ardha Hanumanasana, maybe Hanumanasana. We haven't done such a thing in such a while. So just observe where you're at and you're just pausing and you're breathing. You're engaging all the muscles of the right leg. So pulling the kneecap up, the shin bone is lifting up a little bit if the leg is towards a straighter side, you're curling the toes back and you're just breathing. And you're noticing what you notice. Awesome sauce. We've got one more breath cycle here. At the end of your next exhalation, if you walked that front foot forward, you'll slide it back. If you walked the back knee back, you'll try to slide it forward. So you'll walk it forward. And then you were going to go back to the same shape we just did a little while ago. So you're going to bring both hands to the front of or top of your front thigh. Now, I do encourage the back knee is padded for this next thing. So if you don't have it padded, you might want to pad it. Cool. From here, you might just stay right here. You might lift up through your left arm. You might lift up through your right arm. You might say, yep, just because this is where I'm going to stay. Some of you might lower that right hand back down to the right thigh, sweep your left hand forward, shift your weight forward just a bit to bend your back knee and grab your back foot with your left hand. And then that same little pulsing thing we did with cat chasing its tail, you inhale and kick your left foot behind you and then exhale, drawing a little bit closer. And you've just got about four to five of those, making sure the sensation is as best in the belly of the quad, not in the hip, not in the left knee. And some of you will find that the last time you hug that left heel in, you have enough stability to reach up through your right arm. And you'll just pause and you'll breathe, heart and sternum lengthen forward. Nice work, guys. All the variations are awesome. If your right arm is high, lower your right arm back down. Mindfully release your left foot. Hands come to floor or blocks. Tuck your back toes under a lot. Straighten your back leg as best as you can, hugging all the muscles around the bone. And then shift your pelvis back to straighten your front leg for a modified pyramid pose. And you'll just take a moment to pause and breathe there and say, hello, happy hamstrings once again. Nice work, guys. Inhale, go ahead and bend the front knee and exhale, step back, downward facing dog. And just pause. Notice what you notice on the right side and the left side. Great. Let's go ahead and try the other side. Inhale, lift up through your left leg. As you exhale, step your left leg quietly between your hands. Great. Now lower your back knee to the floor. You might need to adjust that blanket if you're on a mat or on a carpet. And then you'll straighten your front leg long, drawing both hands onto your blocks. And you've got about four to five of these, just straightening and bending that front leg, Ardha Hanumanasana. So we're doing the little bending and straightening the leg first before we hold the position, just because it helps the body kind of psych itself up prepare itself for this. Barbara, I wonder what would happen if you walked your blocks in closer to your foot. Okay. <laughs> and then the next time your left leg is straight, we'll go ahead and work for Ardha Hanum or full Hanumanasana and whatever variation you wish to. So you might need to walk your right knee back. You might slide your left foot forward, but as best as you can, try to keep your hips as square as possible, heart and sternum lifted, flexing through the left toes. There you go. And you're just pausing and you're breathing and you're noticing that Hanumanasana or Ardha Hanumanasana hasn't been anything we've approached in a while. And just, how are you now? Got two more breath cycles here. Nice work, guys. Next in breath, gently bend the front knee, sliding that foot back or sliding the back foot forward. 
And then make sure that left ankle is underneath the left knee before you start to walk your hands up the belly of your left thigh and bring your spine to vertical. Great. And you might just stay right here, pushing down into the front thigh, hugging your legs together. You might reach up through your right arm. You might stay happy as a clam there. You might reach up through your left arm. You might stay happy as a clam there. Some of you will lower that left hand back down to the top of your left thigh, swim your right hand forward, bend your back knee and catch your back foot with your back hand. And then you'll just notice again, taking those little micro pulses. So inhaling the foot away from the pelvis, exhaling pelvis towards the foot. And you'll just observe and notice what you notice, making sure sensation stays in the belly of the quad, not in the hip, and not in the knee, and you might need to make something a lot smaller in order to accommodate that request. And after you've done your last little pulsation with that right heel, you'll go ahead and pause in stillness. Some of you will keep that left thigh on the top of, or left hand on the top of the left thigh. Some of you will reach the left arm up, but you'll just pause and breathe. Awesome sauce, guys. If the left arm is lifted, lower the left hand down. Gently release the right foot. Hands come to floor or blocks. Tuck the back toes under, straighten the back leg long. And then go ahead and straighten the front leg long. And you're just pausing here in this modified pyramid pose for about two breath cycles. And on your next in breath, bend your front knee, shift your weight forward and step back, downward facing dog, hooray. Three breaths, just notice what you notice. And then gently, let's go ahead and come forward into fallen kasana plank pose. So here, ironically enough, is our first plank. We did a forearm plank, but here's our first plank. Lengthen your tailbone back, lift up through those inner thighs and reach your crown and sternum forward. You'll just pause and you'll breathe. Press the floor away even more so the shoulders wrap wide on the back. And then on your next in-breath, you'll shift your weight forward and exhale, lower the knees and lower the torso all the way down to the mat. Now, when you come down onto your bellies, go ahead and separate your feet about hip distance apart. Bring your hands to the back of your head, interlacing the fingers of the webbing. Now, press into your pinky toenails, press into your big toenails, lift up through the knees, and lengthen your tailbone straight back. Next in-breath, crawl your elbows forward just a little bit more. And then you'll exhale and draw your pubic bone to your navel. The next time you inhale, start to push your head into your hands, your hands into your head, lift your head, lift your elbows. They might only come a few inches off the floor, but you wanna keep as much length on the low back, much engagement through the pelvis, through the legs, reaching back behind you. And then just breathing into the upper back. We're trying to strengthen that just a little bit. Take one more breath cycle here, legs stay active, tailbone lengthens back, and on your next exhale, lower all the way down. Take a moment to pause and take a moment to breathe. Okay, bring your hands alongside your lowest ribs, sorry, hands alongside your hips first. Let's do this one first. Turn your palms to face the floor. Now make sure your feet are active, pinky toes especially, big toes especially, inner thighs lift, tailbone lengthens back. Now you'll start to press your fingertips into the floor till the heels of your hands lift up and away from the floor like cousin it, cousin thing. Draw the shoulders up to your ears and the shoulder blades onto your back. Now lightly lift your head so your shoulders and ears are in one line. Great. Next in breath, keep lengthening back through tail, keep lengthening back through toes. And you'll start to walk your fingers back and slightly wide in order to lift your chest up. Great, when you get to the height that feels sustainable for you, keep lengthening your tail back. 
Keep squeezing the shoulder blades onto the back and keep reaching your toes back. You might choose to stay right here or reach so far back through your toes that your legs float up and away from the floor. You might choose to stay here or float your fingertips up and away from the floor, still hugging the shoulder blades onto the back body. Awesome sauce. And you've just got about three breath cycles here. Tailbone lengthens back, toes reach back, sternum reaches forward, shoulders onto back body, heart lengthens forward. Nice job. Next exhale, lower all the way down. Take one more breath cycle here and just observe how do you feel in the body? All right. Peak pose number one, bring your hands alongside, well, actually not, but bring your hands alongside your lowest ribs, planting your hands right next to the rib cage. So maybe not lowest ribs, but up just a little bit. So they're just behind, behind your nipple line. Press down and wide through your fingers. Press down into the toes, lift up through the kneecaps and lengthen back through your tail. Now isometrically pull the hands back to pull your heart forward just a bit until your head lifts, pause. Start to push down into the hands and spin them away from each or spin your thumbs away from each other like you're opening a jar isometrically. So the hands don't move, it's just that isometric action and feel what that does to the shoulders. And over the next three to five breaths, you'll keep pulling your heart forward, pushing down into your hands and lifting up as high as you want to into Cobra Pose. But it's really happening because you're pressing down to the tops of the feet, you're pushing down into the hands, you're spinning the hands forward to lift the heart and sternum forward, lengthening out through the crown of your head. Nice job, guys. You've got two more breath cycles here and you can come as high as you want. Just little actions of really thinking of squeezing the hands apart from each other like you're opening a jar is just to get the shoulder blades onto the back so your heart can lift. And then once you've reached your apex, keep pushing down into your pinky toes and big toes even more. Yep, nice job guys. And then you'll gently lower all the way down. Bring an ear to the mat and just pause and notice what you notice. Awesome sauce. Let's go ahead and extend one arm over your ears. Roll over onto your side and onto your back. And when you get onto your back, bend your knees, plant your feet firmly on the floor and then bend your elbows so you've got little robot arms alongside of you. And take these first few moments that you're laying here to just take some little flamenco wrist circles just noticing what that feels like to go both ways. Flexing and extending the wrists. And this will just be, because some of you may choose to do this and some of you may choose not to do this, but we'll see what happens. So go ahead and come to stillness with your hands. Keep your elbows bent, your fingertips reaching straight up. Walk your feet in so your feet are underneath your knees. And then you might need to separate your feet a little bit so that they're at least hip distance apart and the heels might need to turn out or turn in based upon your knees. Next in breath, push down through your feet, push down through your elbows, push down through your head, lift your hips. Some of you will walk your elbows closer towards each other underneath you. Start to press to the balls of your feet and start to walk your feet in to hold your bump with your hands. Some of you will stay right there just in the supported bridge type of pose. Some of you will reach one knee into your chest and then reach that foot up towards the sky. And then you'll reach the other knee into the chest and the other foot up into the sky. And you'll just pause and you'll breathe. If you're in that modified shoulder stand, make sure your toes are in line with your eyeballs or directly over your hips. And you're still pushing down into the elbows. You're hugging the shoulders underneath you and you'll just pause and breathe. C7 is reaching up and away from the floor as the back of your head pushes down. So we spent a lot of time preparing to get into this pose and just observe and notice how it feels for you. And when you're ready to come out of it, you'll slowly bend one knee into your chest, 
release that foot to the floor, bend the other knee to the chest, release that foot to the floor. You'll probably still be on the balls of your feet. Then lift the hips high to release the hands from underneath the pelvis. And then slowly release the pelvis down to the floor and pause and pause and pause and just be still. Just be still. Once the pelvis comes back to the floor, just be still. Notice what's happening on the right side. Notice some what's happening on the left side. How is the breath? You can release the hands to the floor, Laura. Yep, just pause and be still. And then we'll just do a little bit of Pratya Kriya counter posing. So go ahead and open your arms out to the right and to the left. Separate your feet wider than your hips, just by a couple inches. And then you'll inhale in center and exhale, let the legs fall to one side. A slow inhalation will come back through center and exhale, let the legs fall to the other side. So we wanna keep them about outer hip distance apart. And you'll take this about three to five more times. And you might work with the legs independently, meaning one leg internally rotates as the other one externally rotates and vice versa. Just so you can allow the two innominate bones of the pelvis to come back into alignment so the sacrum feels okay. And I do encourage you to move a lot slower than you think you need to. Yep. Awesome sauce. The next time your legs happen to be on the first side, you'll go ahead and stay there. So some of you went to the right first, some of you went to the left first. But the leg that's on the floor, the leg that's underneath the direction that you're going to, you might cross that ankle over the top knee for a figure four-ish type of twist. And you'll just pause and you'll breathe and you'll notice what you notice there. So the dharma that I've been working with was this whole idea of letting go. Vatas, the things that cause us a lot of disturbance when it shows up as low back pain is the frenetic energy, it's the holding on, it's the constantly being busy and active and doing and doing and going and going. And one of the things that's very helpful for Vata is to slow down, to let go, to soften. It literally is in charge of elimination physically, as well as mentally, emotionally, spiritually, and energetically. So I can't speak to any of the things that might be happening in your life, but I know that for mine, when I experience quite a bit of low back tightness, it's because I'm holding on to too many things, perhaps too tightly. All right, gently release the foot and come back up through center. And then gently go to the other side. And you might take the same variation you took on the first side. So as we start to re-emerge back into what was predefined as normal, I would like to remind us all, myself included, of how we can maintain some of the spaciousness that we might have received as a result of so many things needing to be cut down or slowed down, or how we might be more attentive to the spaciousness that we'll receive when there are fewer things that we have to attend to and juggle. And so as you take these last three to five very slow breath cycles here, just start to notice some of the things that you would like to let go of. Maybe it's part of spring cleaning. Maybe it's part of going back to life as it was pre-COVID or something closer to that, or maybe it's something entirely different. Whatever it is, can you allow yourself the opportunity to pause and to breathe? Notice that we don't have to do a lot of crazy things to be worthy, to be enough, to have something to offer. 
All right. So gently inhale and come back through center. Release both feet on the floor, hip distance apart, and just take a moment to pause and take a moment to breathe. Notice what you notice on the right side and the left side. Notice what's happening in your hips and your shoulders. And then as you're pausing, I'd like you to check in and see if there's any final shapes that might feel good to you. Maybe it would be a happy baby. Maybe you're straight up ready to go to Supta Baddha Konasana. But just notice what final simple shapes might feel really good to you. And give yourself the time, the spaciousness to explore and be with whatever that is for you. Once you feel complete and balanced, find yourself in some symmetrical pose. And that shape might be Shavasana, it might be Supta Baddha Konasana, whatever it is, I would encourage you to keep your body relatively warm. Even though it's starting to get warmer, I wanna make sure that, especially since we focus so much on the low back, from a dance perspective, this makes a lot of intuitive sense. It, it keeps the body very warm and contained so that things don't freak out or spasm. But from an Ayurvedic perspective, it makes even more sense. Vata's calmed when it's warm, when it's feeling nurtured. And then once you find yourself in your final shape, take the first few breath cycles that you're here to really settle. So if you need to do any last minute fidgeting so that you can be still, by all means, please do that. And then I invite you to become aware of a sense of presence that's currently available to you. And you'll draw your mind into the presence, letting it be absorbed by the presence. And you'll let the presence fill your mind. So your mind is absorbed into a state or a sense of presence, of awareness. And then that state of presence fills the mind. Mind is absorbed into presence and presence fills the mind. Continue with this for a few more moments, resting into presence and being absorbed into presence. When it's time to come out, I'll let you know.
gently return your awareness. And just take a moment to pause and to check in. If there's any part of you that longs to linger here for a few more moments or a few more breaths, by all means, hang out here. When you are ready to move forward with your day, you'll start to invite small movement back into the physical form. And this movement comes back, allow it to be something that feels nourishing and nurturing to you. If you'd like to stay on your backs for a few more moments, by all means, continue to stay there. Otherwise, you'll start to make your way to one of your sides. From your side, you'll gently roll over and draw yourself to a tall, comfortable seat. And you'll just take a moment to sit well, elevating your pelvis on a block or a blanket, allowing the hands to rest wherever is comfortable for you and just sitting tall through the spine. In this moment, just observe. Notice the state of being that you have, state of awareness. Notice where the breath is. Where it feels most alive and most vibrant to you. Notice where there's any sensation in the body or the sense of holding. See if you can direct the breath there. You just have three more breath cycles here, being with whatever is present. One of the things that often aggravates bhattas is the mind that tends to wander into the future or tends to wander about the past. And the more that we can just be present and grounded Letting mind be absorbed into presence and presence fill the mind. It allows some of that to dissipate. So with that note and with that intention of keeping presence in the mind and mind filled in presence, we'll go ahead and complete our practice. Bring your hands to heart center on Julie Mudra. Press your palms into each other and really notice what it feels like to feel your hands touching each other. Draw the thumbs into your sternum and feel that weight as you lift the sternum back up. And then soften your chin towards your chest and notice what that does to the breath, what that does to the internal gaze. Take three deep breaths. And then we'll complete by saying, the light within me, 
honors the light within you. Namaste.